guys welcome back hope all of you are doing well so in this video i would be covering the rtp that is revision revision test paper for indirect taxes of paper 4 that is taxation so in this video only i will be talking about the rtp of indirect tax part guys that is section b of our paper 4 chalo and whatever rtp solutions and all or suggested answers are there guys that is as applicable for may 22 exams so whatever provisions amendment changes whatever is applicable for may 22 exams as per that the suggested answers are given so accordingly i will be discussing the solutions and what changes or amendments are applicable for may 22 exams are whatever changes are made up to 31st october 2021 guys so any changes made up to 31st october 2021 is applicable for may 22 exams so for us <clears throat> anything which we have covered in our classes in in addition to that statutory update as released by ICA also i have covered it so it's very much necessary for you guys also to refer to statutory update video which i have already updated so kindly go through it because few of the questions here are exclusively asked on the amendments guys yeah so please be very careful with it so before going through this video i suggest you guys to go through first statutory update of idt in uh, indirect taxes which is already updated chalo guys we'll start with the first question is actually on mcq but a scenario is given or a case is given on that five multiple choice questions are asked so please pay attention be attentive vidula impacts limited is engaged in supplying sports goods the company did not opt for registration under GST. So they have not opted for registration under GST. So it's unregistered as of now. The proper officer under GST based on inquiry finds that the concern is liable for registration and he registers the firm on temporary basis on 15th June 2020. Sir, can the proper officer do this? Is he have a right? Yes, guys, he has that right. So if you guys can refer section 25 subsection 8 read with rules read with rules then there the power is given to the proper officer if a person who was supposed to get registered if he has not applied for registration and if you have if he has not registered then the proper officer has the right to grant him the registration on temporary basis and in that case when the temporary registration is granted that is not the final registration so the person for whom the temporary registration registration is granted he need to apply for the registration within 90 days guys okay means in reg1 whatever prescribed procedure is there so you need to apply for it within 90 days within 90 days of what here when the temporary uh, registration is granted on 15th june 2020 so within 90 days from here he has to apply for the uh, normal registration in reg1 chalo fine next after being granted the registration certificate so registration certificate will be granted in which form reg6 okay all this i'm just discussing for your information so that it will be a like recall of provisions guys next the company availed the following services for the purposes of its business so they are taking some inward input services input services so what are those renting of motor vehicle from blue tax c private limited where gst was charged at 12 percent so please be very careful guys here we need to check rcm whether rcm is applicable on that so here who is the recipient vidula impex limited is the recipient and renting of motor vehicle actually is covered under reverse charge mechanism but only if the supplier is paying tax at six percent but here they have clearly given that blue taxi private limited who is the supplier of this service has paid tax at 12 percent so this is coming under goods uh, transportation service so you know, the person who is giving the renting services is paying tax at 12 percent so is rcm applicable no rcm is not applicable rcm would have been applicable if the tax was paid by the supplier at six percent then even vidula impacts limited as it is registered now as it is registered now they were supposed to pay pay tax under reverse charge mechanism guys clear so in this case no rcm no rcm next 
appointed Mr. Rajesh as technical director for advisory role in the business and payment was made based on the contract entered. However, he was not an employee of the company. Now, this is important. Rajesh is a director of a company who is not an employee because employer employee service is covered under negative list. No GST is at all applicable. Agree. But yeah, Rajesh is giving some director services to the company. So in that case, is RCM applicable? Yes, sir. Who is liable to pay tax? The company. That is Vidula Impex Limited is liable to pay tax. So in this case, RCM is applicable, guys. RCM is applicable. Next. During the course of its business, the company issued an invoice to a customer and erroneously charged higher value. They have charged higher value by 34,000. Such invoice was issued on 28th February 2021. Now, when a company has charged more to its customer in its invoice, so what they have to do? Can they get the invoice back and scratch and do the corrections? No. Whenever the customer, uh, company has charged more to its customer, they can issue credit note. That is whether the value of the supply is charged more or whether the tax is charged more. For that excess value, credit note will be issued, guys. As per section, under section 34.1, credit note will be issued. So I repeat, whenever a supplier is charging more value to the recipient or the customer, whether it is a tax amount or the value of supply amount, so that excess part has to be reversed. How it will be reversed? By way of issuing credit note. Clear? For example, let me just imagine. See guys, actually sale has happened for 1 lakh. I am just imagining the figure. Sale has happened for 1 lakh. So what is the entry I was supposed to pass? Why credit note? I am just trying to explain why credit note? Why not debit note? And that? Now, <clears throat> assume I have made a sales of 1 lakh rupees. So I was supposed to issue invoice for how much? 1 lakh. Or by mistake, I have issued an invoice for 1 lakh 34,000. So what is the journal entry I would have passed? The customer account, whoever is the customer, customer account to cash or bank. Agree, sorry, to sales, to sales. Customer or debtor to sales. This is the entry I have passed for how much? 1,34,000. But is my actual sales 1,34,000? No. By mistake, I have charged 34,000 extra. So now I need to reverse that 34,000. What is the entry I will pass? Sales to the customer or debtor. So I am just reversing the entry. So in this entry, what am I doing? I am giving credit to my customer. So that is why I am issuing credit note. So this is the logic behind why we have to issue credit note. Yeah, I have given the excess debit to my customer by issuing the invoice for higher value. So now I need to reverse it. When I have to reverse the more debit, what will I do? I will give a credit for that excess value. Chalo. This is with respect to 34 1. Let us continue. Further, in the month of February 2021, the company also generated an e-way bill for interstate transport of goods. However, immediately on generation of the e-way bill, the buyer cancelled the order before it's dispatched from the factory for delivery. So e-way bill was generated in February for the inter interstate transportation of goods or movement of goods, but the customer later cancelled the order. Fine. In the month of March 2021, and see, sir, what is the EVA bill is generated? What is the validity of EVA bill and all we have discussed? Agree, it depends on what is the mode of vehicle, heavy vehicles or multi ship, uh, multi -ship mo modal movement or whatever it is. Now, here, what we are supposed to do is once the EVA bill is generated, and if the movement of goods is not happening, can I cancel the EVA bill? Yes, within 24 hours of generation of EVA bill. It can be cancelled if there is no movement of goods, guys. Clear? Chalo. Next. In the month of March 2021, since the company was incurring heavy losses, it applied for cancellation of GST registration on 15th March 2021. Can they do so? Yes, guys. Section 29 of registration chapter, that is CGST Act, provides for the cancellation. So the registered person, he himself can make the application for the cancellation of registration. There are two ways of getting my registration cancelled. A registered person or his legal heirs can apply for the cancellation of registration as per section 29. The second option is the proper officer on his own motion can also cancel the registration of a person under few scenarios. That is whenever a registered person has violated the provisions of 
GST. In that case, the proper officer has a right to cancel the registration of a person. In that case, he has to give a show cause notice. Then the registered person has to reply for it. Then only he can cancel the registration. But the second scenario is not covered in our question. What is covered is the registered person he himself is making an application for cancellation. Can he do so? Yes, sir. It is permitted. Then the order for cancellation was made on 30th March 2021, affecting cancel cancelling the registration with effect from 15th March 2021. This is important, guys. Sir, cancellation order is made on 30th March, but cancellation is effective from 15th March 2021. Can it happen? So, yes, the proper officer can decide. Even when a registered person is making the application, he can ask from when his registration has to be cancelled. So, cancellation order is passed on 30th March, whereas on 15th March means the cancellation is effective from when? 15th March. Fine. So, this is all about the question. Now, we have multiple choice questions on this. And in your exams, guys, multiple choice questions can be asked for one mark or two marks. Means one question can be asked for one marks also, two marks also. There is no definite thing that, okay, every multiple choice question should be asked for only one mark. There is nothing like that. So, they are also asking the multiple choice questions for two marks as well. And coming to RTP, in RTP, the questions will be given only for practice sakes. So, there will not be any marks allotment here, guys. And it is not like, okay, 100 marks question paper. RTP is not like that. Whereas, MTP is like that. It will be given for 100 marks exactly as it is in the exams. But here, the questions will be given on various topics only for practice sake, without marks allotment. Okay. Chalo, we'll start with the first MCQ. After the grant of temporary registration, Vidula Impex Limited needs to apply for registration within. So, temporary registration is granted. I discussed about this. So, the registered person has to apply for normal registration within how many days? 90 days from the date of grant of temporary registration. If no extension of period is to be granted for such temporary registration. So, it can be further extended also. But if there is no extension, it has to be applied within 90 days guys clear shallow next coming to the second question in case of which of the following services the company is liable to pay tax under reverse charge renting of motor vehicle is not there why because the supplier himself is paying tax at 12 percent so no rcm directorship services yes the recipient is liable to pay it is the sixth item in our list you can go through this is on reverse charge mechanism this is the first item in our rcm and directive uh, directorship services is the sixth item guys yeah so in this case the recipient is liable to pay tax under rcm Chalo. next which document is required to be issued by the company in respect of the invoice issued on 28th february 2021 so already an invoice is issued to the customer on 28th february 34000 extra amount is charged I explained you what document has to be issued and why also. So, which is the document which has to be issued here? Credit note, guys. Clear? And in the multiple choice questions, they will just give the answers, the two suggestive answers. So, that is why I am giving the explanation like what should be the answer, why credit note has to be issued in this scenario and all. I am explaining. I have explained it. Next, the company needs to file its final return by. So, credit note is covered under section 341, means you can just refer to it. Then, final return is actually covered under section 45. It has to be filed in GSTR 10, guys. GSTR 10. So, when a person's registration is cancelled, you need to file GSTR 10 as per section 45. Within, within, pay attention, within 3 months from the date of cancellation order or the effective date of registration whichever is later i repeat this is the provision of section 45 any person whose registration is cancelled has to file one final return one last return under gst in gstr 10 within three months from two things within three months from a the date of cancellation order or the effective date of registration whichever is later whichever is later so let us go back and see so this paragraph last paragraph is on this so you can see the cancellation order is passed on 30th march 2021 whereas the registration is effective from 15th march 
15th march okay which is later 30th march so add 3 months for it with because within 3 months from the early, uh, later of two things so we have taken whichever is later is 30th march count 3 months from here 30th march to 3 months so march after that april may june so 30th june guys 30th june hope it is clear for you guys fine chalo next next which of the following statement is correct in respect of eva bill generated for a goods in the month of february for which order was cancelled so whatever eva bill is generated it has to be cancelled within 24 hours let us see the option when generated eva bill cannot be cancelled not a right answer eva bill can be cancelled within 24 hours of generation yes and eva bill can be cancelled within 48 hours of generation the last one is eva bill can be cancelled within 72 hours of generation so our answer is b and please when you guys are studying or reading multiple choice question don't decide your answer after going through first and second options guys yeah please go through all the four options because sometimes when we read the first option or second option you may feel like okay this is only the answer but we need to always choose the most appropriate answer so i suggest you guys always to read all the options then decide what is the right answer yeah Chalo. next coming to the sixth question from now it is descriptive type guys so five question multiple choice questions were there from your descriptive type yeah let me read mr shambu a trader registered under gst in delhi is engaged in wholesale business of toys for kids mr nandi registered under gst in patiala a regular return filer supplies toys in bulk to mr shambu for selling to end customer okay mr shambu paying tax in regular scheme in delhi has not filed gst 3b for the last two months mr nandi wants to generate eva bill for toys amounting to 5 lakh to be supplied to mr shambu also mr narayan from jammu approached mr shambu for purchasing toys amounting to 75000 for the purpose of return gift on his son's first birthday party shambu wants to generate an eva bill in respect of an outward supply of goods to mr narayan examine with reference to the provisions under gst law whether mr nandi and shambu can generate eva bill actually this question is on amendment guys clear so the amendment which is covered in statutory update this question is on that let me just show that also you can also refer to the statutory update yeah this one this one so what they are trying to tell here is guys there see if a person has not filed his gst or 3b for continuous two months his gst identification number will be blocked for the generation of eva bill will be blocked for eva bill generation of eva bill previously it was like if a person's gst in is blocked for generation of eva bill then he cannot generate eva bill either as a supplier or as a recipient or as a transporter he was not supposed to generate the eva bill but now through this amendment what they have told is only supplier cannot generate the eva bill on his outward supply whereas if the recipients or the transporters gst in if it is blocked for the generation of eva bill still they can generate eva bill guys for their inward supply or the transporter can still generate eva bill this is the relaxation given to whom the recipient and transporters clear so this question is actually on that so come to the solution let me go to the solution there are two three questions actually on amendments which is covered in standard update so it's very necessary for a stu cs students to be updated guys so there is a saying if students are not updated, they will be they will be outdated and that. So very much important for you guys to be updated with the statutory update and the amendments. So please take care of that. Next sixth one, the solution. Rule 138E of CGST rules 2017 contains provision pertaining to blocking of eway bill generation facility. That is disabling the generation of eway bill. A user will not be able to generate a eway bill for gst identification number 
if the said gstin is not eligible for ewa bill generation as per rule 138e this is what rule 138e will tell when <clears throat> is now there is some amendment here rule 138e as amended white notification number 15 bar 2021 ct dated central tax ct stands for central tax dated 18th may 2021 sir should we remember this notification number date and all not so important guys if you can remember very good if not no problem you can just mention as per the amendment by the way of notification you can start explaining it provides that blocking of gstin for ewa bill generation would only be for defaulting supplier gstin and not for defaulting recipient or transporter gstin so this is the amendment so only for outward supply that uh, if the supplier is a defaulting supplier means if is GST identification number is blocked for the generation of EVA bill. He cannot generate EVA bill for his outward supply. But can he generate EVA bill for his inward supply as a recipient? Yes, he can do it. Chalo. In terms of rule 138E, a person paying tax under regular scheme, that is section 9. So regular scheme is section 9, guys. Who has not furnished the return for a consecutive period of two tax period is considered as defaulting person so here also our person that is shambhu i guess who has not filed the gstr 3b for the last two months so he is called a defaulting supplier so his eway bill generation will be blocked for him yes as a supplier suspended gstin cannot generate eway bill as a supplier as a supplier however the suspended gstin can get the eway bill generated as recipient or as a transporter so they can generate eva bill as a recipient or a transporter but not as a supplier so in other words eva bill generation facility is blocked only in respect of any outward movement of goods so it is blocked only for outward movement of goods of a registered person who is not eligible for eva bill generation as per rule 138 e eva bills can be generated in respect of inward supply of said registered person so for his inward supply is gstin can be used for generating eway bill so there are totally two supplies here one is outward supply one is inward supply so that is what the question is asked and whenever a descriptive question is asked don't straight away answer to the point guys we need to give a background that is what is done here agree so whatever is explained in this three four paragraphs is just a background about the answer so the ultimate answer is given here for the question Thus, applying the above provisions, there will be no restriction in generating eway bill by Mr. Nandi as Mr. Nandi who is making outward movement of goods is a regular return supplier or filer. So now Mr. Nandi is supplying the goods to whom? Shambhu. So Shambhu is the default person whose eway bill is, generation of eway bill is blocked. Now Nandi is the supplier who is supplying the goods to the Shambhu. So as a supplier, can he generate the eway bill? Yes. He can generate because he is not the defaulting supplier. There is one more supplier. Eway bill generation is blocked in case of movement of goods made by Shambhu to Narayan. So here yeah, one more supply is happening from whom to whom? Shambhu to Narayan. So here yeah, Shambhu is the supplier and Narayan is recipient. Now can Shambhu generate Eway bill using use, using its GSTIN? No sir. Why? Because it is blocked. And he is a supplier. So when he is a defaulting supplier for outward movement of goods, he cannot generate eway bill. So as it is an outward movement of goods to of Mr. Shambhu, who has not filed GSTR 3B for past three, two months, guys. Yeah. So what is important here is Mr. Shambhu is a defaulting person. For his inward supply, no problem. For his inward supply, eway bill can be generated. Whereas for his outward supply, as is the supplier who is defaulting, who has not filed GSTR 3B for the last two months, consecutive tax periods, he cannot generate eway bill as a supplier. Can the recipient generate? Yes. Can the recipient generate or transporter generate? Yes. So this is about the sixth question. Then we'll go to seventh question, guys. See, the seventh question is also actually on amendment. First, let me show that in statutory update, yeah, returns. 
this one guys you can come to this all this i have already covered in the statutory update video so please kindly go through it before doing this stat uh, rtp so it would be more helpful for you guys so now this whatever question we are seeing now seventh question is on this so what is given let me read it here for delayed filing of gstr1 or gstr 3b guys total amount of late fee payable under section 47 of cgst act from june 2021 or quarter ending june 2021 onwards by the registered person who failed to furnish gstr1 or gstr 3b gstr1 has to be filed within 11th of next month whereas gstr 3b has to be filed within 20th of next month provided they are not following qrmp scheme if it is QRMP, they will file it quarterly, guys. By the due date, shall be as follows. Okay, there are different criteria. This is the amendment, actually. Previously, actually, section 47 was easy, but now they have lit make it, made it little complicated. Let me go through it once quickly. Registered person who have nil outward supply. So, registered person whose outward supply is nil, or if the tax amount is nil, then what is the late fee they will pay if they don't file gstr1 or 3b within the due date it is 500 rupees total is 500 rupees if it is intrastate supply means it will be cgst 250 sgst 250 or in case of igst 500 rupees flat okay next sir what if his outward supply is not zero or it is not nil or the tax payable is more than zero in that case we will see what is the aggregate turnover in last year Registered person other than those covered in one year above means the tax payable or the outward supply is more than zero guys. In that case, what is the aggregate turnover in the last year we will see. If it is up to that is less than or equal to 1.5 crore in the last year, then the late fee would be 2000 that is 1000 each or in case of IGST straight away 2000. If the aggregate turnover is more than 1.5 crore but up to this is actually up to up to 5 crore so more than 1.5 crore but up to 5 crore so what is the late fee 5000 or 2500 each and in case of igst 5000 flat next registered person other than 1 and 2 in in means in simple year it means if the aggregate turnover of the person in the last year if it is more than 5 crore then the late fee will be as given in section 47 as given in section 47 so this is what the changes guys actually this question is on the changes or amendment let us go through it mr aishman a registered person having intrastate aggregate turnover of 1.2 crore in the preceding financial year so this is important for us so less than 1.2 crore means up to 1.5 crore agree so it is exactly 1.2 crore so what is the aggregate turnover of this person in the last year 1.2 crore so up to 1.5 as per the limit for late fees okay so he did not file gstr 3b for the month of september 2021 by 10th november 2021 so he has not filed actually for september 2021 what is the due date to file gstr 3b 20th of october 20th of october but he has not filed it okay the amount of tax payable for the month of september 2021 is 8 lakh so the tax payable is not zero it is not nil so where is he falling he is falling in this category guys in this category so tax payable is not nil and the aggregate turnover in the last year is up to 1.5 crore fine next all his supplies are intrastate supplies is there any late fee payable for the same if yes what is the amount of late fee payable so you need to explain this provision and give the amount 2000 guys and in this case is an intrastate supplier na so how much 1000 cgst plus 1000 sgst would be paid which is equal to 2000 2000 hope it is clear for you next will your answer be different in a if mr aishman has intrastate aggregate turnover of 5 crore in the preceding financial year so if the amount of aggregate turnover in the last year is of 5 crore then he will fall in which category in this category exactly so you can observe exactly 5 crore also is covered here because less than or equal to 5 crore if it is more than 5 crore he will come here 
agree so in this sub question where is he falling in this category so what is the amount of penalty sorry late fee 5000 that is 2500 each so it is 2500 cgst late fee plus 2500 sgst late fees which is equal to 5000 guys yeah yes next will your answer be different in a if total amount of tax payable in gst are 3b for the month of september is nil what if the amount pay of tax payable is nil where will he fall in this category guys he will fall in this category first one 500 rupees so in that case what is the late fee sir should he feel the file the nil return yes you should also file nil return even though you are don't have any outward supply even though you don't have any tax payable still you have to file nil return so in that case 250 250 will be the late fee guys which is 500 rupees this is all about this question this complete question is actually on the amendments so let me just go through the solution also quickly once you can observe your so as per section 47 of CGST Act read with notification. Notification is the form from which the amendment has been brought in. The registered person whose aggregate turnover is up to 1.5 crore in the preceding financial year and who fails to furnish the return required under section 39 by the due date shall pay the late fee of 1000 rupees. Sorry, 2000 rupees. That is 1000 CGST, 1000 SGST guys. Yeah. Thus, late fee is payable in the given case and the amount of late fee payable is 2000. And this is how you are supposed to present the answer in the exam. Don't straight away write, ah, the late fee amount is 2000. So to the point, please don't write it guys. In the descriptive type, always you are expected to explain the provisions and then give the answer. Then in the second scenario, it is as per section 47, read with notification, the registered person whose aggregate turnover is more than 1.5 crore, but up to 5 crore, in the preceding financial year and who fails to furnish the return required under section 39 under section 39 means 39 talks about gstr 3b guys by the due date that is 20th 20th of next month shall pay a late fee of 5000 rupees thus late fee is payable in the given case and the amount of late fee payable is 5000 which is 2500 cgst and 2500 sgst next question as per section 47 of CGST Act 2017, read with notification, CT dated, any registered person whose total amount of tax payable in the GSTR 3B is nil, who fails to furnish the return required under section 39, that is GSTR 3B, by the due date, shall pay a late fee of 500. And in the given case, it is 250 CGST, 250 SGST tax. Okay, simple answer. <sighs> Next, eighth question. Coming to the eighth one. Mr. X of Ariana. Actually, this is also a question on amendment, partly on amendment, not completely on amendment. This question I can tell it's completely on amendment. It's completely on amendment. So I suggest you guys to refer to statutory update also. Already updated. Then this is partly on amendment. Not completely on amendment, partly on amendment. Section, sorry, question number 8. So, before this, I will just give a background about this, guys. Now, sir, as per section 29, a person whose registration has been done, can it be cancelled? Yes, on two grounds, it can be cancelled. The person who is registered, can he himself can apply for the cancellation or else the proper officer on proper grounds, he can cancel the registration whenever a registered person has violated few provisions of CGST Act, then the proper officer will have a right to cancel the registration of the registered person. But before cancellation, he cannot straight away cancel it. He will give a show cast notice and the registered person has to reply for it. Then only he can take a call. Okay. Now assuming registration is cancelled, the proper officer has cancelled the registration on his own motion and he has communicated the cancellation order to the registered person so now he is no more a registered person can he apply for revocation of cancellation requesting sir by mistake i have done means i have violated the provisions of the act so please i will make sure that whatever i have violated i will make it good 
please revoke my cancellation please give back my registration can you request so yes as per section 30 30 talks about revocation of cancellation the person whose registration is cancelled can make an application within 30 days of receiving the cancellation order he can make an application to the proper officer telling sir by mistake means i have not done it intentionally so whatever you have to make a request in an application and you will ask him to revoke your cancellation so in that case how many days time you have within 30 days of receiving the cancellation order but is that 30 days final no that is the amendment now so that 30 days that was 30 days is what was given in the act that is section 30 but now that 30 days can be can it be extended yes it can be extended by another 30 days by whom additional or joint commissioner that too if they feel it is not a fixed thing 30 days is the normal time limit it can be extended so 30 days as per section 30 so you can aram sir remember this as per section 30 what is the time limit to make the application for revocation of cancellation 30 days this is the normal time but if the additional office uh, commissioner or joint commissioner if they feel can they extend it for another 30 days yes and also commissioner also has been given power if commissioner also feels that there is some extra time to be given he can also extend it for another 30 days so totally 90 days totally 90 days guys okay 90 days is the normal not the normal time limit if someone asks you what is the normal time limit to make an application it is always 30 days but if you request sir i couldn't make the application within 30 days due to so and so reason then additional commissioner or joint commissioner can increase it for another 30 days and also if you are not able to make it within 60 days also can it be further extended yes by whom commissioner commissioner can extend it for another 30 days class this is the amendment which is also covered in statutory update in registration chapter yeah this one you can see here we will just go through this quickly with effect from 1st january 2021 proviso to section 30 section 30 talks about revocation of cancellation guys of CGST Act 2017 was substituted to permit the extension of time limit for filing application for revocation of cancellation of registration by a registered person. Accordingly, the time period of filing the application for revocation of 30 days from the date of service of the order of cancellation of registration may on sufficient cause, only on sufficient cause being shown and for the reasons to be recorded in writing, it can be extended for another 30 days by whom? by the additional commissioner or joint commissioner as the case may be period not exceeding 30 days that is maximum extension given by the additional commissioner or joint commissioner is 30 days can you give the extension only for 15 days 20 days yes maximum power is given for 30 days only then it can also be extended by the commissioner for a further period not exceeding 30 days so here also maximum 30 days beyond the period specified in clause a so this 30 days whatever second which is extension by commissioner is in addition to whatever extension is given in clause a guys so yeah so this is one more amendment on which question is asked Chalo, let us go through the eighth question now mr x of Ariana intends to start a business of supply of building materials to various construction sites in Ariana. He has taken voluntary registration under GST in the month of April. Oh, voluntary registration he has taken as per section 25.3. Can a person take voluntary registration? Yes, sir. However, he has not commenced the business till December due to lack of working capital. So he has taken voluntary registration but not started. When? When he has it taken in the month of April. So he took the voluntary registration in April but Till December, he has not started his business at all. The proper officer, Sumoto, cancelled the registration of Mr. X. So, this power is given in which section, guys? 29. Actually, 29, subsection 2. Okay. So, prom, uh, proper officer, he himself, on his own motion, cancelled the registration of Mr. X. You are required to examine whether the action taken by proper officer is valid in law. Yes. As per section 29, 2, the proper officer can do so okay then still there is an extension of the question mr x has applied for revocation of cancellation of registration so revocation is dealt in section 30 guys 
of registration after 40 days oh he has made an application after 40 days from the date of service of the order of cancellation of registration department that is gst department contains that application for revocation of cancellation of registration can only be made within 30 days from the date of service of the order of cancellation of registration however mr x contains that the period of submission of application may be extended on sufficient grounds being shown you are required to comment upon the validity of the contentions raised by department and mr x can it be done yes so on sufficient grounds being shown 30 days can be further extended for 30 days and it can also be further extended for another 30 days so the second part of this question is on amendment guys yeah chalo let us go to the solution so some provisions are explained here as per section 29 of cgst act 2017 the proper officer may cancel the registration of a person from such date including any retrospective date as he may deem fit where a registered person has contravened such provisions of the act or the rules made there and as may be prescribed means he has violated any provisions of the act a person paying tax under composition scheme that is section 10 has not furnished return for three consecutive tax periods okay and he will file return wow yearly guys for him for that composition person tax period means year next any registered person other than the person specified in clause b means section 9 person regular tax payer has not furnished the return for a continuous period of six months so your six months means the last six months he has not filed the returns gst year 1 or gst year 3b okay next any person who has taken voluntary registration under section 25 subsection 3 has not commenced the business within six months from the date of registration so in our case the person took the registration in april but he couldn't start the business till december six months expired in september only but he couldn't start the business within september he started he couldn't start till december so our scenario is falling in this criteria guys next registration has been obtained by means of fraud willful misstatement or separation of facts and here see they have explained totally five cases like in, in under which and all grounds registration can be cancelled sir in the exam should we explain all that or should we uh, is it sufficient if i just give this point see it depends on the marks allotment guys if this question is asked for four marks then stick to only point d here okay the other points you need not write it that is b c a you can write it because if, if a registered person has contravent then the proper officer has a right you can mention that point b c and e might not be required i repeat if the same question is asked for four marks then so much of explanation might not be required Clear? if they have asked it for five or six marks then you can give more scenarios guys Clear? and how you have to answer how much you have to explain everything sometimes depends on the marks allotment guys even though the content might be more but the question is asked only for four marks so will you write it pages together will you explain each and everything may not be may not be please don't do it because just for four marks don't spend ample of time guys in the exams very much important to maintain the time in the exams Chalo. as i told you in the rtp actually they don't give the marks allotment so that is why we are just going through whatever answers they have given that is suggested answers thus in the view of the above mentioned provisions sumoto cancellation of sumoto means own will sumoto cancellation of registration of by uh, of mr x by proper officer is valid in law since mr x a voluntary registered person has not commenced his business within six months from the date of registration further where the registered this is for second part where the register registration of a person is cancelled sumoto by a proper officer such registered person may apply for revocation of cancellation to such proper officer within 30 days from the date of service of order of cancellation of registration you can also quote the section here if you quote the section you will your answer will definitely have more weightage when compared to other students guys so this is as per section 30 however the set period of 30 days may on sufficient cause being shown and for reasons to be recorded in writing be extended for a period not exceeding 30 days by an additional or joint commissioner 
and by further period not exceeding 30 days by a commissioner. So 30 plus 30, it can be extended on proper sufficient cause being shown. Next, thus considering the above provision, the contention of the department is not valid in law as extension can be sought in the prescribed time limit for revocation of cancellation of registration. The contention raised by Mr. X is valid in law as extension in time limit is allowed on sufficient cause. This condition also should be satisfied on sufficient cause being shown. Clear guys? This is all about question number 8. Then coming to 9. 9 is actually on exemptions. Geeta Services Limited registered under GST is engaged in providing various services to government. So actually so Geeta Services Limited is a supplier and government is who? Recipient. The company provides the following information in respect of services provided during the month of April. So few services provided to the government in the form of inward supply is exempt under GST guys. Yeah. So the question is on that. So let us see. So you can refer to exemption chapter for this. Supply of manpower for cleanliness of roads not involving any supply of goods. It is purely supply of services. Is it exempt? Yes, 100% exempt. So supplier did not pay any tax on this. Next, services provided by fair price shops owned by Geeta Services Limited by way of sale of sugar under public distribution system that is PDS against com consideration in the form of commission. Sir, is it exempt? Yes, even this services is given by Geeta Services limited to whom government and it is exempt completely exempt under gst next services of maintenance of street lights in municipal area involving replacement of defunct lights and other space along with maintenance generally replacement of defunct lights so replacement of defunct light means goods guys because light is a good and other space constitutes so, so space is also goods constitutes 35 percent of the supply of service so it is not purely the service it also includes goods which is 35 percent is it exempt no actually it is taxable next last one service of brochure distribution provided under a training program for which 70 percent of the total expenditure is borne by the department or the government so there is some training program provided for which brochure distribution is done by Gita, uh, Gita Services Limited for which 70% of the expenditure is borne by whom? Government. So this question is also actually on statutory update means amendment guys. There is an amendment on this part also. Let us see that. Comment on the taxability or otherwise of the above transaction under GST law. Also state the correct legal provisions. If you are telling exempt, why? If you are telling taxable, why? We need to explain that. Clear? Sure. So there are totally four services. Let us go through it. Supply of manpower for cleanliness of roads not involving any supply of goods. So purely service. Pure services we call it as. Is it exempt? Yes, 100% exempt. Next. Services provided by fair price shops to the government by way of sale of sugar under public distribution system against the consideration in the form of commission is exempt guys. Yeah. Yes. Next one. Service of maintenance of street light in municipal area involving replacement of defunct lights and other space constitu constituting 35% of supply of service. So how much is goods part? 35%. But what is the law? Composite supply of goods and services to the government in which value of supply constitutes not more than 25%. Means it should be less than or equal to 25% of the value of the said composite supply is exempt. Since in this case the value of supply of goods constitutes 35%, it is not exempt. Means full supply is taxable guys. Full supply. For example, let me just give an example for this. Assume Geeta services is giving a supply of service along with goods which is for 100 rupees. So the total value of supply is 100 rupees. So what they are telling in this exemption list is maximum 25 rupees can be for goods. 
another 75 rupees should be for services if you are charging more than 25 rupees for goods then entire 100 rupees will be taxable entire 100 rupees will be taxable so in our question actually for goods how much 35 whereas for services it is 65 so for goods it is more than 25 percent so entire 100 rupees is taxable guys for Gita services limited then coming to the last one fourth one fourth one is actually on the statutory update amendment so you can come to this yeah this one exemptions first amendment so entry number 72 services provided to the central government state government union territory administration under any training program for which 75 percent or more of the total expenditure is borne by central state government or union territory administration so here yeah, what is the change here is 75 percent or more of the expenditure previously this was not there so what is the change brought in is 75 percent or more so in our question how much expenditure is born service of brochure distribution provided under a training program under a training program of which 75 percent or more of the total expenditure is borne by the government is exempt since in the given case only 70 percent of the total expenditure is borne by the government it is taxable so only 70 percent is taxable no entire 100 percent whatever value is charged by Gita services to the government entire amount would be taxable guys 100 percent of the amount would be taxable yeah this is all about the ninth question last question coming to the last question restrictions have been imposed on the use of amount available in the electronic credit ledger wide rule 86 b of cgst rules 2017 is there any exceptions to the rule 86 b if s state the exceptions so rule 86 b also was recently introduced it is not completely new so it is not covered in the statute update before that only it was updated so rule 86 b what does it tell is every person can utilize only 99 percent of whatever credit is available in his electronic credit ledger that means at least one percent he has to pay tax on his outward supply using electronic cash ledger that is what rule 86 b will tell but there are certain exceptions for it there are certain exceptions for it the question is act is actually on that what are the exceptions they're asking it chill guys yeah come into suggested answer restrictions have been imposed on the use of amount available in the electronic credit ledger wide rule 86 b of cgst rules 2017 yes there are exceptions to rule 86 b the exceptions to rule 86 b are as under means in the following cases rule 86 b is not applicable that means can they utilize full credit whatever is there in the electronic credit ledger yes they can use it if they are covered in any of the following exceptions they can use it so so let me first read it here this three people first one the registered person or the karta or proprietor or the managing director of a registered person so like if hgf is the registered person who is the face of it karta or if the company is a registered person who is the face of it managing director or any of the two partners full time directors member of managing committee of association or board of trustee of a registered person as the case may be for them this first point is applicable payment of income tax more than 1 lakh rule 86b may not apply in cases where a person mentioned below that is the following three people which whom, whom i read just now i have deposited a sum of more than 1 lakh as income tax not gst more than 1 lakh as income tax under the income tax act 1961 in each of the last two years in each of the last two, two years in both the years they should have paid more than 1 lakh 1 lakh it is not like okay one year more than 1 lakh another year less than 1 lakh means you are not covered under the exception for which time limit to file the return of income under section 139 1 of the set act has expired that is due date to file return is given in section 139 subsection 1 na, in income tax act that time has expired so in simple if the following three people if they have paid more than one lakh income tax in the last two years both the years then for them 
rule 86 b of cgst is not applicable okay next receipt of refund of input tax credit of more than 1 lakh so this people are having some unutilized input tax credit which is refunded so unutilized input tax credit will be refunded only in two scenarios when is it when your outward supply is zero rated on which you are not paying any tax or else your supply is inverted duty structure you are covered under inverted duty structure so what is inverted duty structure that is the tax on your inward supply is more than the tax on your outward supply for example on your inward supply you are paying tax at 18 percent whereas on your outward supply you are paying tax at 12 percent in that case you will have some unutilized input tax credit can i claim a refund of it yes so receipt of refund of input tax credit of more than 1 lakh rule 86 b may not apply whereby a registered person has received a refund amount of more than 1 lakh on account of unutilized input tax credit under the following zero rated supplies made without payment of tax inverted duty structure only in the following two cases refund will be given and how much more than 1 lakh more than 1 lakh it is pertinent to note that refund should have been received in the preceding financial year that is if the refund is received more than 1 lakh in the last year then in this year rule 86 b is not applicable for me it is like that next third one payment of total output tax liability through electronic cash ledger in excess of 1% of total output tax liability sir what is it so you you need to calculate it cumulatively if your output tax liability is 100 rupees if you have paid already using electronic cash ledger more than 1% of it then you need for you rule 86 b is not applicable let me read it if a registered person has paid more than 1% of his total output tax liability using electronic cash ledger up to the said month in the current financial year the restrictions as specified in rule 86 b shall not apply sir what is this let me just check so i am in financial year 22 23 guys so now i am checking whether in september for me rule 86 b is applicable or not so what they are trying to tell is check what is your output tax liability from april to august to august from april to august what is your output tax check it output tax assume it is 10 lakh assume it is 10 lakh and how much 1% of that is how much 10000 1% of 10 lakh is 1% so check till the end of august if you have paid more than 10000 gst using your electronic cash ledger then for in september for you rule 86 b is not applicable for you in september rule 86 b is not applicable and when you are calculating this output tax and one percent limit it has to be cumulatively calculated till september we are checking whether for september rule 86 b is applicable or not now so in that case it has to be checked cumulatively it is pertinent to note that gst liability paid under reverse charge mechanism should not be taken into account while calculating the output total output liability paid through electronic cash ledger so this is also important so reverse if you have paid tax under reverse charge mechanism you are paying only your inward supply is it output tax no so while calculating this 10 lakh if you have paid tax on in, on your inward supply under reverse charge mechanism you should not count it here you should not count it here why because that is input tax you can claim a credit of that agree and you should be knowing one point whenever a person is liable to pay tax on his inward supply under rcm he has to pay it through electronic cash ledger only he cannot utilize credit why because input tax credit can be utilized only against the payment of output tax and under rcm it is actually input tax what you are paying you can add it to your input tax credit but for the payment of tax under rcm you cannot utilize the credit guys yeah, all this we have already discussed in our regular class but just a explanation for you just a recall of the provisions last one specified registered person rule 86 b would not be applicable in case of below mentioned registered persons who are those government department psu that is public sector undertaking local authority or statutory body however commissioner or an officer authorized by him 
in this behalf may remove the said restriction after such verification and such safeguard as he may deem fit yeah so this is all about the solutions guys here also just see what is the marks weightage and accordingly decide if the question is for four marks you can cut short your answer by little bit okay because too many things are given here but if it is for five or six months you can present in the same way guys so you guys have to decide it's looking at the marks weightage for the question how much to explain on that yeah so this is all about the discussion of indirect tax of rtp may 22 exams guys and please make sure that before going through this as i already told you please go through first statutory update video and then proceed with this because many questions you can observe here is on the amendments which are covered in statutory update so hope this video was useful for you guys for your preparations so do prepare well and clear your exams with very good marks all the very best thank you take care